Welcome to the Overlook Motel, a place where underseen and unappreciated films are given their moment in the spotlight. This week's selection is a supernatural found footage horror film that's been largely forgotten in the years since its 2014 release. But I think Seth Grossman's Inner Demons is something of a diamond in the rough. It doesn't get everything right, but it's certainly an effectively chilling effort that serves up relatable characters and some jolting scares. The film is comprised of footage being captured for an intervention-style reality series called Step Inside Recovery. The series is profiling Carson, a young woman struggling with heroin addiction. Carson is convinced she's possessed by a malevolent entity and says she uses drugs to keep the demon at bay. While the crew initially dismisses Carson's claims, a compassionate production assistant eventually comes to wonder if there may be merit to the assertion that Carson is possessed. Although one could argue that the possession angle is a bit on the nose, it still serves as a fitting metaphor for the evils of addiction. People in the throes of drug dependency often feel like they are no longer in control of their mind or body, and that pretty closely parallels what we expect one might experience while possessed by a malevolent force. On the matter of possession, I appreciate that the flick eschews the conventional route that sees the afflicted character confined to a bed for two-thirds of the movie, with a priest tossing holy water whilst quoting scripture. That formula can be very, very effective, but it's been aped numerous times since the release of The Exorcist, so I appreciate screenwriter Glenn Gurr's decision to avoid centering the narrative solely around that piece. Inner Demons also does a commendable job of calling out the cynical side of reality programming. In the opening sequence, one producer casually bets one of her counterparts that she can get one of the family members to cry by their first interview with the winner of the bet on the hook for dinner at Sizzler. The depiction of the production team showcases the biggest problem with shows like Intervention. Even if the producers are well-intentioned, this kind of programming uses people's pain, misfortune, and substance abuse struggles to bolster ratings, not to mention the fact that the person being profiled is ambushed on camera under false pretenses. Now, I'm not saying that shows of this ilk are inherently without value. There is certainly something to be said for telling people's stories and chronicling the perils of addiction, but no matter how you present it, there is an element of exploitation, and I commend the creative team behind Inner Demons for calling attention to that. Interestingly enough, director Seth Grossman was a producer on several episodes of Intervention, which leaves me curious as to how much of the commentary on the exploitative nature of reality TV comes from first-hand experience. The crass nature of reality television aside, Inner Demons works on the strength of its characters. I find the family profile to be believable enough, and I think Lara Vosberg does a solid job in the lead role. Her portrayal of Carson can be a bit rough around the edges on occasion, but I ultimately buy that she's an addict and that she's also possessed, and those conceits are enough to make the flick work effectively. As for why Inner Demons remains underseen, I suspect some of that has to do with found footage fatigue. There was a vocal segment of the horror community that had tired of found footage films by 2014, but the presentation is a lot more professional than much of the output of the found footage boom. Because the footage is being lensed for a reality series, the camera work actually looks rather cinematic. If you've overlooked this supernatural horror film, I would suggest giving it a shot. The central character is fairly relatable, there are several solid jump scares, and the entire flick clocks in at under 90 minutes. If you're keen to check out Inner Demons, you can find it for free with ads on Tubi as of the publication of this post. That's all for this installment of The Overlooked Motel. If you want to chat more about underseen and underrated films, feel free to hit me up with your thoughts on Twitter, at funwithhorror.